100% honest, what would we do? How would we react to certain topics? And what would we say? A study was done by the Jubilee YouTube channel, and I will link the full video and interrupt it down in the description box below if y'all do want to go ahead and check it out. But a study was done by this YouTube channel called Jubilee if Christians were 100% honest. So what they do during the study, which we're going to react to, is they gather seven Christians together with their masks, the lights are off, and they put lights on behind them, red or blue. Red is agree, I believe blue is disagree and they're going to discuss if this is wrong if we agree or if we disagree and y'all are going to get my full opinion and my full reaction now so let's go ahead and get started and i'm going to be reacting to this video entitled if christians were 100 percent on us they have created a space for them completely dark and completely masked nobody knows who they are they have revealed their names but and i think their age but that is pretty much it and obviously i'm unmasked y'all know who i am and i am going to be 100 percent open and honest with y'all so without further ado let's go ahead and start reacting what if you could speak your mind without fear of judgment we brought together seven strangers protected their identities and created a space for them to be completely honest what will be revealed when they take the mask off? There is something wrong with LG. So they're going to go through these list of six questions. And as they are reading this off, I'm going to give y'all my opinion. It's people. So number one is there is something completely wrong with the LGBTQ people. My opinion I would put the red light, agree, there is something wrong with the LGBTQ plus people and it's called an unclean spirit. Let's get their opinion. I'm gonna say it a strong no. Yes, I believe that um, homosexuality is a sin, but saying that like LGBT, LGBTQ plus um, people, there's something wrong with them as people, as human beings, I, that's a harsh statement. <laughs> so it's, it's a hard topic. This is a really sensitive topic because I know that a lot of LGBTQ people have been hurt by the church. They've been hurt by Christians. Mm -hmm. I personally have family members who identify as they who... Also, uh, this is a little random, but I do want to point this out that I'm watching this in 1.25 speed. ...are homosexual. While God hates sin, he loves the people, and he loves the homosexual, and he loves the transgender because he died for them. I'm not really sure that that's true. Yes, God loves everybody, but at the same time, if you're living a homosexual lifestyle, you're living in sin, so. But the problem that I do see with LGBTQ people is that the lifestyle, it does take away a lot of things. They're depressed, they're lonely all the time, and that's not the life that God called for you. When you receive Christ, the Spirit of God can deliver you from homosexuality. Yeah. Deliver, key term, when you get saved, and if you are in that lifestyle and you get saved, go and seek deliverance because that is an unclean spirit moving in your life. It, it, it is so completely unclean because it's unclean for a man and a man to sleep together and to do the same things that a man would do with a woman. Again, I'm using like PG terms here, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Seen it happen for people who identify as And like again, I do understand that this is a very sensitive topic, but I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm not gonna be beat around the bush about it. Sin is sin. Sexual or homosexual. And there's no getting around God it. God delivers them and they no, no longer choose Deliver. to Deliver. One thing, Amen. you know, the Lord says that if you have sinned against one law, you have broken all the laws. And so every single human being is wrong like if you ask that question are homosexuals wrong well sure but are they a different type of wrong no they're not a different type of wrong they are they're the same wrong mm -hmm. as 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 i am i feel like we tend to back i can't say i agree with that I can't agree sorry the i just can't agree lgbtq community for example i come from a hispanic household and sexual abuse is brushed under the rug so many times straight but you choose to magnify let's say my gay cousin 
<laughs> over my molester uncle. You know what I mean? It's right. there, yeah. There's something wrong with both. And the question is, then why do we magnify the sin of homosexuality? Mm. It's because no one goes around saying murdering is okay, That's that right. uh, mm-hmm. theft is okay. But there are people going around saying, well, love is love and homosexuality is just love. Yeah, again, this goes back to the scripture is once you sinned, then you break the whole law. Like, homosexuality is not a greater sin than telling a little white lie. lie. And no one's walking around saying murdering's okay, molestation's okay. Because it's obviously not. But yet people are saying homosexuality is okay. Including in the church. Preach, Calvin. And they're trying to justify it. And so the church... and has to do some sort of um, defense. And that's why this sin gets more attention than the others. Yeah. And so they can escape their shame, not by marching down a street shouting pride, embrace who you are, look within. They can escape their shame by casting on Christ and receiving his yeah, forgiveness. Okay. Women who get abortions are murdered. All right. Question number two. Is women who get abortions are murderers? Yes. Some people can say it's just a clump of cells or it's just this or it's just that. It's a baby. And if you get an abortion or even agree with abortion, you're a murderer. You may say, well, I'm not the one doing the abortion or having the abortion. If you are a partaker of another man's sin, you have committed that sin just the same as the person having abortion. So women who get abortions, they are murderers. First. It is God who gives and takes away life. Man or woman has no place taking a life that they didn't breathe into. There is no I mean. going around that one, I think, for Christians. You I mean. kill a baby that makes you a murderer. I mean. This topic, sorry, it gets me emotional because I've just seen people go through that and, sorry, <laughs> um, and they feel it in their soul and in their spirit that it was wrong. Y'all, yeah, and this is so sad because if you talk to people that have had an abortion or know someone that's had an abortion, they struggle with that guilt and that shame because everybody has a conscience, Christian or not, and after they do it, they realize how lo- how wrong it is. But yet some people continue to do it anyway because of fear. So, I mean, I, I agree. that pain and that shame and regret, um, my husband himself... And, and y'all, sisters. the first two topics, the LGBTQ plus agenda and then also abortion, those are two of the things that I strictly speak against on this channel because the LGBTQ plus agenda is going against children. So is abortion. Like you're literally murdering a baby. And I cannot stand the thought of our next generation or even people in my generation being destroyed by these agendas. So that's why I fight so hard against it. They are all a product of rape. And I mean, that's my husband. <laughs> so to imagine that, like, he wouldn't be mm-hmm. here. If his that is so good because if you guys didn't hear what she said, uh, her husband and two sisters, they were products of a word that I cannot say. And to think that they wouldn't be here if their mom chose to get an abortion, that's sad. Like, to think about that. Oh, they're going to decide to keep them and raise them. You know, it's, a, it's hard to think about. Yeah. Maybe it was not in a good um, experience. Maybe you were maybe you were a victim to something abusive. Maybe it wasn't planned. But let me tell you something. God, he's never early, never late. He's always I on time. Mean. The fact that you were given this gift of mm, life. Preach. And if you can't handle it or you can't take care of it, there are options. I I'm mean. Just wondering then, what, what would you think of people who, like, stand outside of, uh, like, abortion places and, and try to stop people? <laughs> it makes me so upset like the people who just protest and try to shove um and judge and condemn others that is not love that is not god is- so you agree that abortion's murder but you don't agree with protesting against it meanwhile we don't have problems with the lgbtq plus people yeah i, I don't know people it. jesus is very gentle and he would not make them feel like they cannot come to the father because they are in shame or not worthy mm-hmm. I do want to address, I think there's a misunderstanding about what people do who stand out in front of abortion clinics. What they're doing is not abusing them, they're not attacking them, they're letting them know that there's options, telling them about crisis pregnancy centers, offering to adopt their children, explaining what abortion really is. I'm just going to applaud Calvin right now because he low-key preaches. It's really important work. And if we all believe that abortion is murder, and we all just said that we do, well then what it is is mass murder. It's genocide in the United States. It's Mm. worse than the Holocaust. 
And so I wouldn't want to throw stones at someone who's out in front of the concentration camp saying, don't murder Jews. I would want to go alongside that person and applaud that person for being courageous. And I think that's really important work that all Christians should support um, to help try to fight abortion in this country. Kevin. I have had sex outside of... So, question number three is I have had a word that I'm not going to say because we're, we're trying to be PG right now, okay? But no, never been married. Had a boyfriend like a boyfriend like one time when I was in like sixth grade. Obviously, it wasn't real. So no, 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 no. Is having sex outside of marriage sin? Yes. Marriage. Yeah. Yes. Oh my god. Sorry. I'm just like now. Hey everyone. Was doing it. Uh, we're on many cycles with that. Like, I've had an orgy with females. I've had, you know, that one person you can just hit up anytime you want to and they're available. <laughs> you know, at some point you have to stop avoiding a sin because God hates not sinners, but the sin because it comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I'm now married and my husband abstained till marriage and he has had to deal with the repercussions of my sin in the past. Yeah, I wasn't saved until I was 20. And before that time, I did have sex outside of marriage and even when I was first becoming Christian, I would hear people say, oh, you can't have sex outside of marriage. And I said, okay, well, I'll do everything else, but I won't do that one thing because that's a really hard thing to, to give up. You know, when you have sex with somebody, um, it's really hard to move on from that. You start feeling all types of things with yourself. And it's just remembering that God doesn't see this to be mean or to be a dictator, but to protect you. Yeah, if I can add to that, to be completely honest with you, um, I'm scared of sex. I had a very traumatic experience when I was younger where I have had family members um intend to take advantage of me and because of that traumatic experience i just have had that fear to be enclosed with just one man in a room even though i have not lost my virginity pornography has been something that has been rampant in my life and y'all and this is what the church that don't talk about as well is truly in, in in my spiritual experience has been almost equal going wrong against god going wrong against self that brings so much shame so much guilt mm -hmm. but when the forgiveness comes we see the true glory of god because we see how broken we were i mean how, um how reformed we are through christ okay 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 anyone who isn't christian is going to hell <laughs> Anyone who isn't Christian is going to hell. Agreed. And y'all, I believe that they're not talking about old people who are like lukewarm or like babies or anything. Like, because the Bible speaks about like an age of like knowing, like you know. Obviously, a two-year-old, if they die, is not going to go to hell. Why? Because there's an age of accountability according to scripture. And then if you're lukewarm, again, that's a totally different topic. Yeah, for me, this one's a pretty easy one. John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If Bro, I'm telling y'all, Calvin's preaching. The Bible, either we believe what Jesus said or we don't. I mean. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tough sentence to answer. And to be honest, I suppose I can't just flatly say yes or no. So it's, it's tough. Why? With that being said. Um, what does Christian really mean? Yeah, I agree with that. It makes me cross like no, because Hello. everybody uses the word Christian now, right? I I believe there's Christians who aren't going to go to heaven. Yeah. What about people who? I'm talking. To, I believe that the question is centered around true qu Christians, not like lukewarm, not the religious type, but like true like, Christians. Like you know, say Judaism or Islam. It goes back to the Bible. It says that to go to heaven, you have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that, that Jesus Christ is Lord. And there's a lot of people who don't identify as Christians who believe that. What if there's a... Hey, okay, this is like a totally different subject for a totally different time. But like, if you believe in Jesus as the Son of God, God manifests in the flesh, but... Yet you don't identify as Christian. You're not truly walking with God. Yes, I would have to question your that, that, that moment, they confess with their mouth and they believe in their heart. Like, they didn't live their whole lives being Christian. Are they going to go to hell? I don't believe that. So I think to say that if you're not Christian, you're going to go to hell, it's kind of an absolute that mm -hmm. drives more people away from Christianity than brings them in. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of babies that have died. And I don't think that they would go to hell because they didn't even know how to make a sound. <laughs> God gives us a choice whether we want to spend eternity with him or whether we don't. And that's a free will choice that he gives to all of us. We all have to accept that we all are sinners. Mm -hmm. And the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is separation from God. Mm -hmm. But I've heard people's stories who didn't even know the Bible 
and had near-death experiences where they actually went and visited hell the way that it was described in the Bible. I'm scared of dying. So I'm scared of dying, agree or disagree? No, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. To live is Christ and to <laughs> die is gain. That's my father's uh, favorite verse. We are gaining eternal life. We are gaining a new faith. We are gaining a new body. We are gaining... Also, the Bible says that when a Christian dies, we pass from death into life. So we have may die, have died physically, but in the spirit, we are still alive in Christ Jesus. Everything. Like, y'all, Jonah already died. Jonah, she died a long time ago because it's no longer Jonah who lives. It's Christ living in me. Hey, that That's here. a word. It's, not, it's joy is about to be with him, obviously. It's the best. Yeah. I always say, I can't wait to die. <laughs> my mom hates it. I always say, it's like, God, oh, take me now. Not suicidal. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Y'all, and some Christians, some Christians or some people, and they all said that they disagree. Like, I'm not scared of death. And God, like, Jesus, when we come to him, he takes away the fear of death. That's the whole point. And the fear of death... Absolutely not. And she said that, like, my mom thinks that we're crazy because we say that we can't wait to die. And it's like, I'm not suicidal. And, like, if you tell people you're not afraid of death, they're like, they're like, are you, like, good? And people think you're crazy. Yeah, but, like, I have, just come to I have so like, much more to gain more. in the next life than in this life. saints gather worshiping Christ, and I could cry about it. Same. It, it is going to be so surreal and so beautiful. And I mean, death is just... The way to get there. Death is gain. I fear losing my non-believer friends and family. So, do I fear losing my uh, non... Or do I have the fear of losing my friends and family who are non-believers? Of course. Who wants their family and friends to die and go to hell? No one. It would be the greatest pain to go to heaven and not see your siblings there. Mm -hmm. I mean, my dad isn't saved, and half my family are Catholic, and I can't imagine a more miserable place than away from the perfect creator of all things. I mean. In John 6, Jesus says that of all those that the Father has given me, I will not lose one. And so God is faithful and just, and I trust God that he will save all of his people. I do pray for my loved ones who are unbelievers. I share the gospel with them. But ultimately, I know it doesn't depend on me. So. I agreed up to Calvin with Calvin up to this point, but this is when we split ways. Sorry, Creation Calvin. Is in his hand, so it's not for me to, to fear or worry. I agree in a sense, like to a certain extent, that we shouldn't worry about it. But at the same time, like, of course, everyone has that thought that, like, when their loved one passes away, were they truly walking with Christ or did they even know Christ? It says that. It's God's will for everyone to be saved. But at the same time, the truth is, is that not everyone will. When I was an unbeliever, yeah, we all have free choice. Why are Christians always wanting to shove their beliefs down my throat. We know what the Bible says, that people will go to hell. And if we don't tell people about it, that blood is almost on our hands. Yes. And I do fear that there will be people that I know and love who won't ever come to God. But Amen. I know that there is still hope for them. We'll have you put your masks mm -hmm. back on. Oh uh, yeah. So that is all that for this video that I'm going to be reacting to. Let me know. Some of these were having topics. The abortion. Of course, abortion is murder or LGBTQ. There are something wrong with him. Am I scared of dying? No. If I had SEX outside of marriage, no. Ha or do I fear losing friends and family going to hell? 100%. And y'all, this was me totally unmasked. So if Christians were 100% honest, I'm your girl because I do not sugarcoat the gospel. I do not beat around the bush. I do not say, well, everything's just going to be okay. You can keep on sinning and everything's just going to be a bed of roses. So y'all, I'm unmasked. I gave you my 100% honest opinion. And to be honest, I think that we should be bold and honest about our faith despite masked, unmasked, lights off, lights on. We should be 100% honest. And the chances are this video is probably going to be taken down or have a flag, but 
Oh, well, it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. The links to give are down in the description box below. I will put the uninterrupted video down in the description box below. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Always remember that Jesus loves you. God bless. And don't forget to live each and every day supernatural. I love you guys in Jesus' name. Amen.